So it, I've always been a conservationist, I think uh, an environmentalist uh, at heart, um, kind of a tree hugger kind of guy, but um, um, I wanted to do something to, you know, maintain the habitat. And I like the, the, the history of this area in particular. Um, and it just intrigued me, but it was way outside of my, um, I don't know what you'd say right there, my background. Um, I bought it and I had to sell timber to pay for it. So I sold about eight acres of old growth hardwoods over there and did a habitat restoration cost sharing program with the forestry service to replant which would have been the native trees in this area, longleaf pine. So we've done a longleaf pine restoration project over there. Um, and that's how we financed it initially. Um, and that's, uh, that's how we got to this point, I think. Lots of things. So uh, we compost, but uh, I have um, added commercial compost from Brooks Contractor um, a lot and then uh, we've planted cover crops and you know legumes and all that kind of stuff to try to restore it and then um, we don't we don't put chemicals on the on anything um, to try to restore the I don't know what you call that flora and fauna and it has really come back you would not believe Natural balance. the anywhere you dig around here you'll get earthworms um, so that's I guess that's part of it we burn uh, which I think is real healthy for the soil. So we burned all the fields just, uh, what, maybe three weeks ago mm -hmm. or a month ago. And uh, it just greened up incredibly, you know, within a week or so. Um, so that's a part of the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, that's for the long leaves too, right? Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. But we burned, we burned, uh, you know, I've got my prescribed burn uh, okay. certification. So we burn every probably other year uh, around the long leaves. We planted a row of trees for each of the girls' birthdays and we're just slowly putting in, you know, some diversity of the trees that are around here. So we've planted all types of varieties of trees, but we've put white oaks and red oaks and live oaks and long leaf pines out here, um, blight resistant chestnut trees and um, chestnut oak and I don't know all the different ones that we've planted out there, dozens probably. And then we've uh, we put in pollinator buffers to bring in uh, pollinators and that's been helpful as well um, I think in getting all the other you know bio stuff going. So it's got a milkweed, coneflower, um, something that, that uh, flowers pretty much you know, spring through through fall and we've got something blooming all the time. Yeah. This farm was part of Farm Life Elementary School originally um, back in the 19th century and when we first bought the farm one of the things that was extremely important to Ken and I was to get back to the idea of agriculture as a mode of education not just in the sense of learning about animals um, but also in the sense of conservation of land and all the things we can do without chemicals to, to have more balance with how we sustainably preserve the land too. Um, one of the things we now do is beekeeping and of course one of the byproducts from bees is honey. So we do sell honey directly from the farm and we love to have kids come out by appointment to learn about beekeeping um, and look at the beehives and talk about pollination. We do also harvest the bees wax and the propolis and we make um, products including one with citronella in we were talking about earlier to keep off the bugs. The buzzing in this red bud reminded us that some people probably know us from our honeybee festival that we did two years ago now and we were overwhelmed with the support that people showed for coming out and learning about bees and seeing the different products and learning from different beekeepers as well 
We haven't been able to hold that festival last summer and we probably will not be able to hold it this summer, but we are planning on August 2022, having again our Honey Bee Festival and we're hoping as many people as possible, children included, will come on out to the farm and learn about beekeeping and how we get our honey and what we do with our honey um, and taste sampling. We were lucky to have Buggy Town Cafe provide a tea room last time as well. And I'm hopeful that we'll have various vendors and kid-friendly activities again in August, 2022.